Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can set up multiple cameras and render from multiple cameras. I had already done a video, if you go to the channel, um, I had already done a video on how to set up multiple cameras, but I did it in 2D um, in the grease pencil. Um, and it is kind of the same process. Um, I also did it in uh, Maya. They have what they, ca they call a camera sequencer. Uh, so we can use multiple cameras. As if you see this video, you'll see that there's a couple of, it's not very intuitive. Um, this is the same process, but again, this was done in 2D. This was done like scene one, scene two, scene three. Uh, check it out. It's called uh, how to set up multiple scenes. Uh, with one grease pencil scene. And so let's go ahead and get started, guys. I have a scene, it's a pretty simple scene. It's just a ball bouncing. We're gonna add a couple cameras and we're gonna go from camera one and then camera two. Uh, in fact, we're gonna add a couple cameras and we're going to animate both cameras. That way we have a little bit of motion through the cameras instead of just having static cameras. So let's go ahead and get started, guys. Like I said, I deleted the camera from the scene. I have no camera. All I have is this uh, plane, the light, one light, and one sphere, which is this bouncing ball. All right, let's go ahead and get started, guys. I am going to hit Shift A to add an object, and then I'm going to add a camera. And there it is. All right, I'm gonna drag this camera up, and I am going to uh, push it back, maybe a little higher, and maybe tilt it down just a little bit there so that I can see this ball. And in fact, let's go to frame one where we start. Let's go to frame one and let's see where this camera should be. Let's move this camera all the way over here. Let's also see where this camera is seen. So I'm gonna break up the uh, viewport into two separate viewports by putting my cursor way at the corner and then dragging to the right. Click and drag to the right so we can split the scene. On this scene, I'm going to do maybe a top view so that I can see that I can move my camera. And on this view, I'm gonna hit zero so that I can um, view what the camera is viewing. So in this scene, I am going to maybe rotate it a little bit, maybe rotate it a little bit down uh, and move it over just a little bit. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit further up because it starts to bounce up. And so at frame one, camera one, which is this one, will be right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and um, hit I to insert a keyframe at frame one and I'm gonna do location and rotation. As the ball bounces and travels this way, uh, you can see that the ball stops. Let's see, let's say it stops bouncing right about here at let's say frame 80. So let's go ahead and move this camera this way and hit I to insert a keyframe location and rotation. So let's check that out. And I'm viewing this view. I'm gonna hit play as it follows that bouncing ball. Cool. And then when the ball stops, I wanna have another camera here so that it could zoom in on it. So let's go ahead and create another camera. Shift A to add an object. And I'm gonna hit another camera. And I'm gonna put that camera right about over here uh, and I want to go go to this view I'm gonna push it up rotate it so that we can view that ball and what I'm gonna do with this camera I'm gonna select it and I am going to rotate it just a little bit right there And at frame 80, where th this camera stops, I am gonna frame, I'm gonna keyframe this one. So hit I, location and rotation, wait till the ball stops, 
right about there at, a, at about 110. I'm going to do another keyframe, hit I, and then I'm going to zoom in from 110 to about 125, maybe 130. And I am going to grab this camera at frame 130. I'm going to zoom in to right about there and insert another keyframe. Boom, there it is. And so uh, this camera will sit there and wait for us up until 110 and then zoom in. That's pretty cool. In fact, um, let me slow it down a bit. Just by grabbing this one keyframe uh, and dragging it, maybe another, because it was a little fast, Hit play, zoom in, awesome. So now how do we go from first camera, which is this one, I am going to click on it and it does change. Let me go back to the beginning of the animation. Hit play, this first camera follows the ball and then it stops and then that's it. We don't see the other action. You can see it here in the top view. This one stops and then this one picks up the action, but we don't see it here. How do we go from camera one to camera two? In fact, let's label these. I'm gonna stop it here for a minute. This will be camera two. And this will be camera one. So camera one, camera two. All right, well, the way you do it is by placing markers. So we're gonna do uh, a marker way at the beginning. And the, the marker is right here, marker, or right here. I have the graph editor open and we can close this down. Let's close this down. We can close this down by doing this and then pushing this one down. So we have the marker here. Let's add a marker. Add a marker, uh, M is the keyboard shortcut. It's right there. We're going to add a marker at frame 80. M, there it is. And then we're going to select this other camera. Uh, just by adding the markers, nothing happens. Those are just markers on your timeline. See, nothing happens. We're still getting camera two all the way. Even though we have two cameras, we only see one. So let's go ahead and bind those cameras to the markers. Uh, let's go to frame one frame one and if you click on the marker menu bind camera to marker but wait we have to have camera selected camera one selected so we have camera one selected we are on marker one frame one so let's go to marker bind camera to marker boom and you can see that oh it's already there camera one so go to frame 80 right here select camera 2 select camera 2 you have to click on the on the actual camera but you see this is the view you see that little gray um, selection on the camera on the green camera that means I'm looking through camera 2 still even though I have camera 1 selected I'm looking through camera 2 so you want to make sure that you select camera 2 and make sure that you select and view from camera 2 we are on frame 80 where we had set that marker down and now we can bind camera to marker. Boom, you can see that camera two right there, camera one. Now if we go all the way back to the beginning of the animation, hit play, you can see it's camera one and then it changes to camera two automatically. And the cool thing is that you can render like this automatically if you saw I'm going to stop this here for a minute if you saw my video uh, I did this in Maya they call it the camera sequencer but after you set up the shots it doesn't automatically happen you have to create another camera which includes both camera views and then the, and then you can render it but here in blender I think it's a lot easier once you bind those cameras to those markers it's automatic you can render this in fact I'm going to go ahead and render this uh, from 1 to 150. Um, I'll think I'll, I'll speed up the process a little bit. You'll see me set up the render 
We'll come back with the renders done. Hey guys, uh, the rendering is done. Here is the actual uh, movie, buying camera to marker. And if I hit play, it's from the first camera and then switches automatically to the second camera. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Hey guys, uh, I hope that you liked the video. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you guys.